Okay, cool. Um, so, hello, everybody. Um, this is my name is Will, and uh, we're we're doing the starter's guide to Derb tonight. So, what is Derb, and why should I use it? Uh, Derb is a terminal-based web scanner uh, that can be used to spider out outside website. If you don't understand what spidering is, that's where you're you're essentially trying to go through all of the different um, directories and links on a website just to map out uh, the entire website. Uh, it's one of the tools that is provided on default versions of Kali Linux. So if you have a Kali VM that's uh, fairly recent, uh, you should have this by default. And as of right now, it has significant advantages over one of the, uh, uh, the previous top contenders for web spiders, which was Burp, uh, such as A, it is not attached to a monolithic program that is giant and scary and uh, has lots of lots of things going on in it. Um, it. This is just run through the command line, so it's nice and simple. Uh, and two, it can be used completely free, which used to be the case for Burp's Web Spider, but is no longer. So rip that. Um, and then the uh, the, the third, uh, and possibly the most important point, is that you do it all from the terminal. So you look like a Linux badass while you're doing it. But if you're a wuss, you can also use the, uh, the JavaScript version, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. So uh, let's just start off with some simple derb, derb usage. Um, again, this is a fairly simple and straightforward program. Uh, all you do is you open up the terminal of your choice of Kali. Uh, the, the syntax is derb, and then whatever website that you want to spider. And doing that, uh, we'll use a particular word list known as common.txt. Uh, to spider the site that you've targeted. So I have a website up at the moment running on Docker. So let me jump into my Kali box here. Hopefully the, get a full screen. Hey, good. My VMware tools weren't working earlier. So, So let's just open up a terminal here once this is done loading. And now the, the website uh, that I'm running on is running on this, uh, the, this 192 address right here. Um, if you have an actual domain name, the, uh, the, the domain name works as well. Um, I'm just running it this particular way because that's how my, my Docker thing is set up right now. So uh, like I said, simple syntax, just derb. The, the website, hit enter. Um, you can see the word list uh, right here is that common.txt. Uh, and you can see in the bottom, it is going through. It's already gotten a hit um, for the assets directory right there. And it, it'll just quietly go through and uh, run through every word on that word list, uh, trying to see what is, uh, what is actually out there. So going back to my presentation, I'll let that run there for a little bit. So some of the, uh, the the other things that you can you can do with Derb that's a little bit uh, more involved is that you can actually change the uh, the word list that uh, that you're using. Uh, Derb has a number of custom word lists uh, by default that uh, that you can use to spider it. It's uh, located in this uh, user shares word list under Derb. Um, and you can see from the picture, there, there's a few different word lists there. And then you can also go into some of the subdirectories and find some more. Um, again, the, uh, the, the syntax for this is fairly straightforward. Uh, it's derb, the website, and then the word list that you want. Uh, if you want to get fancy with it, you can actually use multiple word lists if you're able to separate them with a comma. So, for example, if you want to do comment or common.txt and indexes.txt, um, you just separate each of those with a comma, and you can run all of those different word lists at the same time. Um, you can and should get extra word lists. Um, one of the ones that I recommend is Seclist, which is uh, you can download that from the, uh, the, the, the app repository. And that has a ton of really good word lists that, uh, that you can use to customize your search. And you can also create your own word list if you're looking for uh, specific things. So um, 
Let's try a, a little short demo with this as well, just so I can show you the syntax of the word list. So here's all of our, our stuff that we found from our, our, last, um, our last find here. So let's say we want to go to user share uh, word list uh, derb. And we want, um, let's take a look at what, what, what we've got here. Let's say we want big.txt. So that's a good bunch of words that we can run, but we also want to want, uh, run some more stuff too. So let's do user share word lists, derb, phones. And I believe there is one in here. Let me take a look at my file here for a second. There's one I was using earlier. Oh, let's just do apache.txt. Just for fun. And so you run that, and you can see now that it's running both of those word lists at the, uh, at the same time. So you can run multiple word, word lists with this program just fine. So we'll quit out of that for a second. There's a reason that I'm, I'm quitting out of that one in particular, uh, and I'll explain that here in an upcoming slide. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is file extensions. So as you might have noticed with the, uh, uh, the, the common.txt, um, it was just running the, uh, the, those common words that they have in that word list, uh, no extensions, just the words, um, which is great for finding directories, but what if you want to find like individual uh, PHP extensions or see if there are any like txt things floating around? Uh, Derp has you covered for that. Uh, so you can use dash big X if you want to try to look for individual exten extensions. So that's if you just want to find like text files, you do derb at whatever website that you're going, going for dash big X dot txt. And that will search for, or that will search using the common word list and it, it will append that dot txt uh, to all those words on the, on the word list. Uh, this works similarly with the, uh, um, the, the word list in that if you put commas uh, after that, you can actually search for multiple individual, um, individual file extensions, uh, depending on what you want. Uh, but if you want even easier, uh, you can use dash small x. And uh, doing, that, or doing that, you can actually uh, use a word list of extensions. So if you have a text file full of uh, the extensions that you want, you can just run it in doing that. Um, and in fact, Derb has a, a word list specifically uh, to check for common ex extensions. So uh, why don't we try that out here? Oops. Let's go over here. So we're, we're just going to run uh, common again. But instead of doing the uh, just plain common, we're going to do dash x and then we're going to look in user share word list derb. I believe the file is oh, no. extensions common txt. And we'll hit enter here. And you can see now that it is running through that common word list uh, with all of these different extensions on this extension file trying to look for look for that. So again, I'm going to quickly quit out of that. Uh, and I, I believe I'll explain that why I'm doing that here in my next file or next uh, slide, I should say, excuse me. So <laughs> denial of service prevention. You may have noticed uh, when that thing was running, that thing was running very, very quickly. Um, when you're spidering websites, it's generally not your goal to kill the website. So if you want to be nice and you want to, uh, to, to pace your, uh, your actual discoveries, there is a command for that. Uh, dash Z will allow you to add milliseconds between each of your requests. And that way you can make sure to play nice when you are testing your web pages. When I was testing this earlier, I actually knocked down my, uh, my, my Docker website about two or three times um, just running without the, uh, the, the dash Z. So I can, I can show you the, uh, the, the difference on that as well. Um, so we'll go back to the Kali box here. Um, 
again, we'll just run a very basic scan, but in, this time we're going to do dash Z and let's throw about 100 milliseconds between each request. And you can see that that is running significantly slower enough so that uh, the, uh, the, the website is not going to be overwhelmed by your poking and prodding here. Um, a very, very important command to, uh, to, to remember so you don't uh, accidentally knock things over that you, were, uh, that you were not intending. All right, let's see what's next here. So I, I won't have demos for these, but here are some, uh, some other kind of useful options that you can do. Um, there is a dash W flag uh, that you can be used to ignore the warning messages. Um, Derb in particular, if you're running through a website and you start hitting uh, particular error codes, uh, 403 is one that comes to mind. Um, it will automatically quit, quit out if you aren't using that uh, dash W command. But if you wanted to continue on and uh, to, to keep spidering the website despite those, uh, those 403 errors, uh, dash W is the way to go. Uh, there is a dash A and a dash C, and both both of those respectively, uh, dash A allows for you to use a custom user agent for your requests, and dash C allows you to input a uh, uh, custom cookie. So if you want to get really fancy with the, uh, the, the actual requests, if you have like a particular user agent uh, that has uh, maybe more access, or if you have a, a cookie that you're trying to spoof, uh, these are commands that are good for that. Uh, dash capital N is used to uh, ignore specific res response codes. Uh, so, you know, when you're going through a website, you're going to get various codes. Uh, some of like the, uh, um, some of the, the more famous ones obviously are like 404, not found, or 200, which is the, the okay request. So you can use dash N to ignore uh, specific codes that are coming back if you want to filter uh, more what you want to see. Um, and then dash T can be used to stop derp from forcing a backslash at the end of all of your searches, which again, that is uh, useful if you're looking for like a, uh, a particular extension or something like that. You can use that, uh, that dash T in order to, to make sure that you're getting the, uh, uh, the correct output. So with that out of the way, we can talk about Durbuster. It's, it's a GUI version of Derb. It can do a lot of the, uh, the, the same things that the, uh, the, the console version does. But, but why, though? Why, why would you use this? You, use the console. The console's cool. You, you want to use the console, right? Come on now. But a, admittedly, uh, this is a little bit nicer for uh, finding, um, basically just showing the data in a, a visual format. Though annoyingly, it does not have a dash W option. So for every 20 error codes that it doesn't like, it will stop your scan and you have to manually click on it in order to get through it. So I don't recommend this. Use the terminal. The terminal is cool. All right, and uh, that's, that's about all there is to it. Um, I just thought I'd, I'd show off a, a kind of cool tool that, uh, that I've ended up using through a, a few of my different CTFs and things. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Did it spider or is it just brute force directory guessing? I think it's, uh, it is spidering because there's a, a, a recursive option. Like it's going through recursively through the directories. I know it's not uh, um, showing it. I, I think there is a particular command that I haven't been able to figure out in order to uh, uh, to actually show those, but yeah, it's it's going down uh, each uh, each of those directory paths and trying to find things as well. So, uh, any other questions? Ethical hacking uses of tools and some nefarious uses from chat. Uh, oh, from chat, let me stop sharing here so I can see that. Uh, so the, the actual ethical hacking use of that tool, um, 
like I said, if you're doing some some type of uh, of red team engagement, uh, one of the the very first things when you're you're doing like web based stuff is that you want to spider out the site and figure out exactly uh, what is on there. Um, I know in the uh, um, the the actual website that we were looking at, right? Um, in my example, was a uh, was the website that they used for the 421 assignment. Uh, which was the uh, the OWASP ju juice box. Um, so you can find all sorts of things that are just kind of hanging around that probably should not be hanging around on the open internet. Um, there, there are things like text documents or like within, uh, uh, I, th I think I can, I can show you, um, there was a, an FTP folder in this particular example as well that's a, you could actually get uh, get file transfers off of and things like that, and so it's it's useful for actually figuring out um, what is in the domain that you are uh, that you're trying to get into. Um, I as for nefarious, I, I'm not going to go like into detail because you guys should not be using these things for nefarious purposes. Just gentle, gentle reminder. Um, but you, you also need to kind of be careful when using tools like these as well, that you're staying within the, uh, um, the, 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 the zone of things that your, um, your employer or your, uh, whoever your customer are, um, have basically specified as the rules of engagement. Cause these things can easily kind of go off into, um, domains that, uh, you know, just following various different paths that can easily lead you outside of the, uh, uh, the, the roles of engagement zone. So you do need to be careful uh, using tools like the, this um, when it comes to, uh, to, to that in particular. Good question. Uh, anything else? I, I hope I, you guys got to, uh, get to get a little bit more familiar with a uh, uh, a tool that can be useful for your uh, uh, your pen testing needs.